released in 1981 in arcades and a year later ported to the big three of the old school game systems, that is the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, and the Intellivision, we have Mousetrap. Let's check it out for the ColecoVision system. Okay, so at first glance, Mousetrap appears to be a Pac-Man clone, but it's actually much more than a Pac-Man clone. And if you think it might be a Ladybug clone, you'd be wrong again, because this game is kind of a hybrid between Ladybug and Pac-Man. Now let me explain what's going on here. You control the mouse head, moving all about the screen and there are several cats chasing you. Your goal is to eat all the little yellow dots, which are supposed to be pieces of cheese. Along the way, you'll see uh, various items. Right there's a key at the bottom left. They are bonus items to pick up for extra points. You'll also see X's scattered about the screen. Those X's are supposed to be dog bones. And that's, uh, they function more or less like power pellets in Pac-Man. Except, you don't have to use them right away when you collect them. You save them for a, a, a certain point in the game when you want to use them, and you hit a button to turn into a dog and eat the cats. Pretty clever, I think. Now, in addition to the, you know, the maze, the, the basic standard maze represented by green lines, there are blue, yellow, and red doors. Now, in the arcade version of this game, there were three color-coded buttons, and you hit the corresponding colored button to uh, change the position of that colored door. And that was a, a, a pretty neat, ingenious way uh, to incorporate some complex gameplay into the uh, arcade game. Now, on the ColecoVision version of this game, you don't have three different colored buttons. You have a, um, a button, a, a number button pad, with an overlay that you're supposed to put in that. I sadly don't have the overlay, so it took me a little bit to uh, uh, fiddle around with the buttons to figure out what buttons did what. So if you don't have the overlay, but you do have this game for the ColecoVision, you'll be using the one, two, and three buttons to change the color, uh, the color doors positions. Now don't ask me which buttons correspond with which colors. I don't know, and frankly, even if I did have the overlay, you don't have time to look down at the controller and figure out what button to hit. So you just kind of hit whatever one is closest to your fingers, and hopefully it's the right one. If not, you hit the one next to it or next to that. Anyhow, so one, two, and three cover the three colored doors, and the number five button is the dog button, which turns you into a dog and uses up one of your dog bones. Now, as you can imagine, as you advance in the game, the cats become faster, and the gameplay becomes harder. And thankfully, the music actually changes. Every so many boards, the music will change, which is very nice because the music can become a little bit grating over time. Now, there is one aspect of gameplay that I uh, left out, and that's the inbox in the middle. If you go through that inbox, it'll teleport you to one of the four corners. And that doesn't really come into gameplay. I'm playing on the easy mode. When you play on a, on a harder mode on the ColecoVision, there's a, uh, a hawk, an enemy hawk that uh, comes on the screen and will uh, eat you, whether you're a mouse or a dog. And the only way to get away from that thing is to go into the, in, uh, the little inbox. And uh, that will make the hawk go away and it will teleport you to one of the corners. It should also be noted that every time you eat a cat and they go into their little pen for a little bit, when they come out, they're a little bit faster. So you're going to want to strategically use your dog bone button option, whatever the hell you want to call it. Use it sparingly, because it'll make faster cats. So if you've seen Mousetrap but have overlooked it because it looks like more or less a Pac-Man or Ladybug clone, uh, you shouldn't overlook it. It's actually quite an enjoyable 
difficult and challenging game. Now, like I said earlier, this was ported to the big three of the old school systems, but the ColecoVision version is actually pretty darn close to the arcade. So if you do have a choice between those three systems, I would go with the ColecoVision version first, followed by the Intellivision, and lastly, the Atari 2600 version. Because frankly, with only one button and a joystick on the Atari version, it radically changes gameplay to begin with. And there you have it. Mousetrap for the ColecoVision. If you'd like to pick up Mousetrap for the ColecoVision, you can take a look. I have it available in my online video game store. Link in the description box. I'm Dami from Classic Games Revisited. Until next time.